Well, hello. It's Ben Greenfield. I got my buddy Nick on today's show. He's kind of weird. He's into tapping, tapping, like emotional freedom technique and pushing little buttons all over your brain and your body. It's actually pretty intriguing, though, what he does. I figured it was high time we got somebody on to talk about tapping because I've actually used it. I've used it for sleep and I've used it for stress and for some weird reason. It actually seems to kind of work. So uh, call it what you will, kind of woo-woo, but we're going to talk about it either way. But before we do, I want to get your mouth watering because on the menu this week are stuffed poblamo peppers with tomato radish salsa and chipotle yogurt, a seared fish and farro salad with summer vegetables, and a peach and pickled pepper grilled cheese. My kids love grilled cheese. It's got butter, lettuce, and radish salad with it. All of these are on the apron this week from Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery in all of America. Uh, They make a ton of stuff, and they send it to your house all the ingredients. So it doesn't come to you cooked. No, you don't have to sit there and eat it right away before it cools off. You get all the ingredients and the recipe cards to make it yourself. My kids have learned how to cook using these recipes. I've learned a bunch of tips because you just pull out the ingredients and follow the plan. They've got a two-person meal plan. They've got a family meal plan. They even have a wine plan where they select certain wines and deliver them along with their their recipes and their ingredients. just comes in this box to your house. Boom, you put it together. So uh, there's a lot of convenience and a lot of variety in the recipes. They give you 12 new recipes every single week, and they only use non-GMO ingredients, meat with no added hormones. It's actually healthy foods and chef designed recipes so they actually taste good they've been tested they're not hacks over there putting these things together over at blue apron so they're giving you 30 dollars off your first order very simple you go to blueapron.com slash ben that's simple blueapron.com slash ben 30 dollars off blue apron better way to cook This podcast is also brought to you by something I brought up last week, but a lot of people don't realize how freaking effective this stuff is. We talked about acetylmerostoliate in last week's podcast, which is this naturally occurring fatty acid that's been researched clinically to do things like heal up knees and fix joint pain dramatically. And then we also talked about things that can increase the efficacy of that, like proteolytic enzymes, which break down fiber in the body. Now, when you combine that with known free radical damage fixing ingredients, stuff like curcumin, ginger, tart cherry extract, that's got some incredible bioactive compounds in it, like anthocyanidins and proanthocyanidins uh, that allow for breakdown of uric acid crystals within joints, synovial fluid support, like hyaluronic acid, painkillers, like white willow bark, and then glucosamine and chondroitin. When you put all that together, you have the complete shotgun formula for your joints. Well, I have created that exact thing. I've created that, and it's all available to you. It's called Flex. Flex. Keon Flex. You get it over at getkeon.com. Get K-I-O-N.com. You don't need a discount code or anything. You just shoot over there. You'll automatically get 10% off of Keon Flex. So that's the one I'm recommending to you today. When I'm injured, I pop six in the morning and six in the evening. For general daily maintenance, take four. Anytime during the day, preferably on an empty stomach. Works best on an empty stomach. So don't stuff your face and take Keon Flex. Take it fasted or at night before you go to bed. Let it do its magic while you sleep. So check this stuff out, Keon Flex. If you don't have it, then your joints are not going to be as fluid and healthy and lubricated as they could be, and you're not going to banish soreness quite as quickly. So you can jump back into your next workout as fast as you want to. So Keon Flex. Check it out at getkeon.com. He's an expert in human performance and nutrition. Voted America's top personal trainer and one of the globe's most influential people in health and fitness. His show provides you with everything you need to optimize physical and mental performance. He is Ben Greenfield. Power. Speed. Mobility. Balance. Whatever it is for you that's the natural movement. Get out there. When you look at all the studies done studies that have shown the greatest efficacy 
All the information you need in one place, right here, right now, on the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Hey folks, it's Ben Greenfield, and you may have heard of this thing called tapping before. I've heard of it. I've actually been kind of messing around with it for, gosh, like four years now. Uh, It was actually today's podcast guest that first kind of told me about it, and I thought it was really stupid and Uh, woo-woo. I tried it, and um, well, we'll kind of kind of keep it a mystery for you because I, I want I want him to tell you more about it. But uh, tapping, it's, it's, it's also known as uh, EFT or emotional freedom technique. And it's just what it sounds like. You tap different parts of your body and then you say an affirmation. It's supposedly some wildly effective healing modality that combines like ancient Chinese acupressure and modern psychology. Uh, so my guest is uh, Nick Ortner, Ortner, O-R-T-N-E-R. And um, he created this film called The Tapping Solution and wrote a book, multiple books, really, on the same topic. I have I have two here on my bookshelf, The Tapping Solution, and then also uh, one that I, I actually used even more than The Tapping Solution. That's The Tapping Solution for uh, Pain Relief, because I do painful things to my body. Um, and uh, I want to put Nick in the hot seat today to, to uh, learn about how this stuff works, if it works, if it's all just placebo and I'm wasting my time smacking different areas of my body around. Uh, and, uh, so if, if you do want to learn more about Nick, I mean, his, his, uh, his Amazon page is pretty comprehensive. Uh, his tapping solution book, uh, as well as his tapping solution film, uh, are both available, um, in the show notes and you can grab the show notes fittingly enough over at bengreenfieldfitness.com slash tapping. Uh, so Nick, welcome to the show, man. Ben, it is a pleasure to be on with you and uh, a fellow skeptic because I was a skeptic. So we can we can bash it and laugh at it and then see the results. Were you a skeptic, really? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. look, I, you know, I wake up almost every morning and this is what I do, right? I write books about this and it's my life's work and I still laugh about it because, you know, it's it, it's it's strange. Why are we tapping on ourselves? Why, you know, this isn't something that we grew up with. This isn't something we saw on TV. You know, at least like deep breathing and yoga and meditation has been around a little longer. We have some reference point. Um, so I didn't have a reference point. And yeah, I'm a skeptic. And and I tell you, here's the other part of it. Every time I hear a success story, I'm blown away. Like They don't get old, right? I'll hear someone say, oh, you know, I had 20 years of pain and I did this and it went away. And it surprises me just as much as the next time, as the, as the first time, because it's just incredible that something could work this well. Yeah, I uh, I asked you that skeptic question because honestly, it's shocking how many people kind of like in our little health and fitness industry are not skeptics and just like yeah. try everything. Some people say that about me. They're like, oh, Ben Greenfield just tries everything and endorses everything. Well, you would be shocked at the number of boxes of unused <laughs> yeah. sh- is out in in the garage in the garbage can and the number of emails that I simply reply to with a no thanks not interested sure. whether that's like people who want to like come on the podcast or people who have some brand new supplement like it's it's pretty crazy like my my filter uh is developing a a more and more microporous membrane uh, when it comes to to filtering through a lot of this stuff, and I'm I'm incredibly picky, and I, I take a pretty scientific approach to a lot of this stuff. Well, at the same time, I'm keeping an open mind to the idea that sometimes thousands of years of Chinese medicine isn't wrong either, even if there's not some double blinded clinical research Western study behind it. So. It's an it's an art and a science, but it's, it's an uh, art and science. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious though. Um, uh, for b- before I I even ask you about the history of tapping because I actually am curious. Like it, it, you you make it sound like it actually isn't as old as like yoga or meditation or anything. So I want to hear a little bit more about how it came to be. But um, first of all, w- before we even start into that, let's just start here. Like, what is tapping? Like, give me, give me kind of like the five minute elevator pitch. I guess that's a really long elevator ride, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's stuck in an elevator. But I'm going to, I'm going to give me the, give me the, I'm stuck in an elevator with Nick Ortner and asking yeah, him what he, what tapping is. Tap. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So, you know, you described it, um, the, the, the one minute, the uh, short explanation is that it's a combination of ancient Chinese acupressure and modern psychology, because we are literally physically tapping on these endpoints of meridians on our body 
while saying certain statements, while focusing on the anxiety, the stress, the pain in our body, um, whatever's going on. And what the latest research is showing, the research that I'm really most excited about, is that when we tap on these endpoints of meridians, we send a calming signal to the amygdala in the brain. And I know you know well, and many of your listeners are so educated by your podcast and other work, they know about the amygdala, that fight or flight response, right? Mm -hmm. It's the part of us that gets activated when we're stressed out. It's that ancient part of us that served a good purpose. Um, You know, when we're being chased by a tiger or a lion, we want to activate that stress response. We want to fight, Mm -hmm. we want to flee. We want the blood to flow away from our four brains into our arms and legs. Uh, The challenge, and I think one of the, the real challenges of modern life is that we're activating that fight or flight response all day, every day. So, and we're activating in situations where we can't do that fighting or fleeing. So we get an email from our boss and it stresses us out. Really the best thing we could do besides tapping is to go for a run, you know, and like just get that stress response out in some way, have that physical activity, get that cortisol to actually be used and move through the body. But well, well we that, do, we that out. or, or reframe our response, right? 100%. But, I, but I'm from the basic, you know, from the basic pathology of, what our body was designed to do, right? right? It was it was designed to fight, flee, or freeze. Is, is right. really the third. To curl part up in a response. fetal position and shit our pants. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So the tapping is sending that calming signal to the amygdala. That then, you know, and I love that you said to reframe your response because I agree with you. And the challenge for so many people, let's say that you get angry about something. So your boss sends you that email, and you're angry. That can be such a primitive response, right? And we've all had that experience where it's like, oh, you know, like that cloud of anger where you can't even think straight and you're looking at it and you're going, okay, I got to do better. And what the tapping does, if we engage it in that moment or if we engage it preventively and start, you know, changing our response and our behavior, we send that calming signal to the amygdala. Then the brain, the body relaxes. We're telling it it's safe. And then we can reframe it. We can then have that conscious thought that says, hey, I'm going to take the higher perspective here. Um, You know, one of the things that people struggle with initially when they first look at the tapping, especially if they've been into, you know, positive psychology in the self-help world is we usually start by focusing on the negative. We start by focusing on the truth is what I say as opposed to the negative. Hey, this is how I feel. I'm going to take a moment to acknowledge how I feel that, yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm anxious. As opposed to what people tend to do, it's like, when they learn about positive thinking is they go, okay, I'm angry. I'm anxious. So I'm just going to bury it and swallow it because Mm -hmm. that's not positive thinking. You know, like I'm just, it's going to go deep down in my gut and I'm going to make believe I'm happy about life, but I'm really not. Um, you know, we were talking just before we got on about Hay House, who's my publisher and, uh, Louise Hay, who is the queen of affirmations. I'm sure a lot of people know her name, uh, you know, best-selling author. She just passed away. A year ago, is she um, is she who's like behind Hay House, Louise Hay? Yeah, Louise oh. Hay is behind oh. Hay House. You know, she started her work in the '80s, working with um, people with AIDS. One of the first people to actually look at that movement and bring love to that community and compassion that community. Uh, you know, so I sat down with her. I had the honor of sitting down with her a couple of years ago and interviewed her about tapping because we had been doing some tapping together. And I said, "So you're the queen of affirmations and positive thinking. What are you doing tapping on the negative?" And, and she paused very sweetly. She was 85 years old at the time. She looked at me and she said, honey, if you want to clean a house, you have to see the dirt. Hmm. And that really blew me away in that moment. It just it, it encapsulated what we tend to do with the things in our life that aren't comfortable, right? We either think, well, we don't have a tool to change them or shift them, so we're just going to ignore them, or we're going to be positive and happy without addressing how we truly feel just for a moment where we ignore the dirt. So with the tapping... We're focusing on what we feel in our body, on our pain, our anxiety, the stress, the anger. We're acknowledging that dirt. We're doing the tapping process to send that calming signal to the amygdala. And then that reframe happens automatically. That's when someone says, you know, you can make a positive statement and actually feel that it's true as opposed to having, you know, trying to say a positive affirmation and having that part of your brain going, well, that's total BS because that's not who I am. Yeah. So that's that's your five okay. minutes stuck in an elevator with me. Okay. All right. Um, what I want to do maybe later on is is really get into brass tacks, like where you tap and what what 100%. what it's like. I know this is an audio podcast, but pretty sure you can you can handle it. Um, yep. Anyways, though, so how did you actually learn about this? And before you dive into that, by the way, excellent book for people listening in, "Heal Your Body" by Louise Hay. Have you read that, Nick? 
mean, that's that is it's like the Bible of uh, you know the South oh, Park really? movement. I'd never heard of it until last year. Somebody sent it to me, and uh, I actually I gave it to my kids to kind of show them how when they have. Uh, certain certain emotions or even certain physical issues, how saying certain things to yourself, you know, what I guess you would call an affirmation, um, can help you with that. And uh, it's actually a super, super, like, thin and easy read. It's an easy read. It's it's a great reference point. Um, yeah. I'll often use it with tapping with people. So, because you, you see what the challenge is, she addresses, like, okay, if you have this physical challenge, it may be related to this emotional experience. And then you can actually use the tapping with that. Yes. So, for any of you listening in, grab the book. I think it's like, uh, I don't know, it's got some cheesy cover, like clouds or a rainbow or something. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, anyways, got some 80s it's good. Cover. Don't judge it by its cover. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call it? An 80s cover? Yeah yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, Nick, how did you actually discover uh, discover tapping? What's the story? Yeah, so I started using it personally. You know, this is this isn't a technique that um, that I invented. I'm just sort of uh, a user and a proponent of it, and and someone spreading the message out in the world. Um, it was discovered. You want to do a little bit of the history of it, and then I'll we'll get to my my point in it. Yeah, I actually am curious about the history of it too. Yeah, so let me give you some background, so because you know there's there's a history before me that is really important and uh, and critical. So uh, late, you know, 1979, 1980, Dr. Roger Callahan uh, was a traditional psychiatrist, psychologist. I think he was a psychologist uh, working with a client by the name of Mary, and Mary had an intense water phobia. So this is this isn't just like I'm scared of swimming. This is scared of taking showers, drinking water. It was like a full blown phobia. And he was a traditionally trained psychologist, so he did what he knew to do, right? Talk about it, uh, tried exposure therapy. Hey, let's look at the water. How do you feel? Uh, you know, relaxation, do deep breathing. Um, and, you know, after a year and a half of working with her, not getting anywhere, um, getting to the point where she would leave his sessions with migraine headaches from having to focus on the issue and being so stressed out about it, uh, you know, he was frustrated, as you can imagine. Um, and one particular day they were at his home office sitting outside looking at the pool that he had in his house so that was exposure therapy hey look at the pool what do you feel what are you thinking and she said you know when I look at the water I get butterflies in the pit of my stomach and he had been reading about the Chinese meridian system and the acupuncture system and had read that the stomach meridian ends underneath the eye so on a whim on a a moment of inspiration he said well try try tapping underneath your eye while you look at the water. So she did that. She tapped for about a minute. And in that moment, which is still astounding, in that minute, the water phobia completely cleared. She just wasn't scared of it anymore. So he was astonished, as you can imagine, if you've been practicing you know, for 20 years and all of a sudden one minute handles this issue. So he started researching the meridian points, working on this tapping, and he developed what's called TFT, thought field therapy. And with TFT, there's a bunch of different points, and for different issues, you do a different sequence of points. One of his students by the name of Gary Craig said, you know, this is great, and it works great, but it's really hard to remember, and we're having to change things up all the time, and um, it's hard work, so let's hit all the main points every single time. That was one of his innovations among many, and he developed EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. So that's its current form where we do all the points at once. And in right around 2003, I found Gary's material online, uh, Patricia Carrington, other experts, and started using it for myself. I shared it with friends and family. The running joke at the time was don't say anything is wrong around Nick because he will make you tap on it. Uh, I've gotten much better <laughs> since then. I let people you know, approach me, but then it was like, Hey, you you know, your shoulder hurts, let's tap on it. I remember driving to a Yankees game right around then, 2003, 2004, uh, with my friend Pete, and he's just a normal dude. We're going to a Yankees game, about an hour and a half drive from here, and he was complaining about how his shoulder hurt. He had a football injury, and it just wasn't going away. And I said, hey, I just learned this thing. Let's try it. So we went through the points, this, that, and the other. He thought I was crazy, so, you know, that addresses some of the questions about do you have to be a skeptic all right he he was a skeptic or do you have to believe in he thought I was nuts but he humored me we were stuck in the car and the pain in his shoulder went away I was so astounded um you know one thing after another seeing all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt your story dude um I know I was gonna say this for later but since you say the pain in his shoulder went away can you tell me like what you guys did for his shoulder like what did it look like that you did for his shoulder 
Yeah, and you know, why don't we do it? You want to do a quick pain relief session right now? We do five minutes, and people can have an experience. So they uh, let's do it. Should it uh, as long as people can operate heavy machinery because they might be in their cars <laughs> yeah. driving. Yeah. So if you're driving, you don't want to be up, responsible please. for the pilot. Yeah, we're not one responsible one. For, for anyone. Sure. Um, so pull over. You know, do whatever you need to do. If you have pain in your body, it's tapping is so powerful for it. It can work so well. Uh, to reduce or eliminate the pain. So focus on that now. You might decide to to work on that. And it doesn't matter what your diagnosis is, just give it a shot. And if you don't have pain, just pick something that you're stressed out about, anxious. You can also just tune into your body. You might tune in and say, you know, my shoulders are really tense. People hold a lot of tension in their neck or my stomach is painful. Uh, Just tune into a place where there's stress and anxiety, overwhelm. And what's happening, we want to pick one thing. So we want to, you know, you might have had a lot of things come up. Just pick one place where you want to focus. That's something that you want to release. Maybe you're angry about something that happened a week ago or you're anxious about an upcoming event. My right hamstring's a little tight. That's what I'm going to focus on. All right. And then as, as we tune into it, give it a number in intensity on your stress, your emotion, your pain from zero to ten. So 10 being the most intense, the most painful, zero not being there at all, and just pick whatever number comes up. Yeah, Don't for me, it's a, getting for me it's a six. All righty. And then we're going to start. So we have, our, we have our focus. We have our number. We're going to start by tapping on the side of the hand. It's called the karate chop point. And if you take four fingers of one hand and tap on the outside below the pinky of the other hand, doesn't matter which hand you use, and you're just tapping gently on the side of the hand, tapping repeatedly, and repeat after me. Below then the we, pinky? Below the pinky, yeah. So that whole meaty part of the hand, the four fingers, you know, fit kind of perfectly there right below the pinky. Okay. On the outside of each hand. Yep. And maybe, Ben, in the show notes, we can stick a diagram in there, some links if people want to refer to it. A video of you in a cute sailor's outfit. <laughs> well, I've got just the thing. Sorry. How did you know? <laughs> I'm derailing right, tap- it. Go ahead. Tapping on the side of the hand, feeling that issue, focusing on the stress or the pain or whatever's going on, repeat after me. Even though I'm holding on to this issue. Even though I'm holding on to this issue. I choose to relax now. I choose to relax now. Even though I feel this pain in my body. Even though I feel this pain in my body. And you can change the language if you want to say this anxiety or the stress or whatever it is. I choose to relax and feel safe now. I choose to relax and feel safe now. And now still on the side of the hand, we're going to do it one more time, even though I'm holding on so tightly. Even though I'm holding on so tightly. And it's hard to let this go. And it's hard to let this go. I choose to relax now. I choose to relax now. Now we're going to tap through the points. The first point is the eyebrow point. It's on the inside of the eyebrow, right where the hair ends, and it meets the nose. And you can tap with two fingers of one hand on one side or the other side or both sides. The meridians run down both sides of the body. And we're just tapping gently. And I want you to just take a moment as you tap to focus in on that issue. We're bringing it up in order to send that calming signal to the amygdala in order to release that stress response. So if there's pain in your body, just feel into that pain for a moment. And now we go on to the side of the eye. It's not at the temple, right next to the eye on the bone. Again, one side or both sides. If something stressful happened, I want you to just think about it. If that hamstring got hurt in a particular event, something you were doing, just bring that to mind. Where did this pain come from? When did it start? Now we move under the eye. Maybe as you tune into that pain or stress in your body, you notice some emotions. So if I were to ask you if there was an emotion in that pain or there's an emotion in your body, what would it be? And some people will say anger or grief or sadness or anxiety under the nose. And just tune into those feelings now, being present with the pain, being present with your thoughts and feelings about the pain or about the stress or about the anxiety. And now we move underneath the mouth below the lip above the chin and that little crease in there, tapping gently, focusing on this stressful issue, focusing on what you're feeling and what you want to let go. For the collarbone point, feel for the two little bones of the collarbone and go just right below it. You can tap with all 10 fingers of both hands, tapping and thumping away, focusing on that issue. What's this all about? 
What's this pain about? What's this stress about? What's coming up for you? And how can you let it go? Two points left in this round. We go underneath the arm, three inches underneath the armpit, right on the broad line for women, either side of the body, tapping gently, being focused on this challenge, this stress, this issue. Last point, right at the top of the head, right at the crown, tapping gently, being present to this stressful issue. And now we'll do one more quick round. Back to the eyebrow and just say out loud, it's hard to let this go. It's hard to let this go. Side of the eye, all this pain in my body. All this pain in my body. Under the eye, it's safe to feel it. It's safe to feel it. Under the nose, and it's safe to begin to release it. And it's safe to begin to release it. Under the mouth, letting it go. Letting it go. Collarbone, from every cell in my body. From every cell in my body. Under the arm, right now. Right now. Top of the head, right now. Right now. Take a deep breath in. And let it go. That was a quick experience, and now we tune back in. So you check in on that anxiety that was an eight, and where is it now? You check in the pain. Where is it now? Mm. And, and then you also ask yourself, what else came up? Now, you know, I'm guiding... You know, people through a very general process, so using general language and cues, if you're working one-on-one -on -one with someone or working more specifically on something, you can talk about, you know, people will say, I remember um, working with a lady, Kathy, who had a terrible toothache for two and a half years, multiple root canals, um, you know, antibiotics, nothing would do the job. And I asked her, when did this pain start? And she had never thought about that question or been asked that question because it's, you know, it's something doctors don't usually ask when it comes to a toothache. I said, what was going on in your life? And she said, my mom had just passed away. Like that weekend, we went to Vegas. It was a total surprise. It was a total shock. And she made that connection that that horrible event happened right when her toothache happened and what, hmm. when that infection happened. Um, we tapped. This was actually live on stage for Hay House, and I think we were in Baltimore or Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. 3,000 people. She just came up from the audience. Her pain went from about an 8 or a 9 to a 2 or 3 in those wow. 15 minutes. And then my favorite part of it, she went home, got the book, did more tapping, got rid of the pain completely. And listen to this, man. This is, what, like, this is my favorite part because this is what I know you and your listeners who care about the science and research and the, the reality of this as they should she had x-rays from her dentist before the tapping. She had x-rays because, you know, they do x-rays with the root canal, and you could clearly see in all her x-rays a huge infection around her tooth. So her tooth was infected, and that's why it hurt. She took antibiotics, root canals, nothing worked. She did the tapping. Pain goes away. And now people go, oh, well, is that in her head or whatever? She goes back. The infection's gone. Really? I have the x-ray. Yeah, I have the x-rays in the pain relief book. You see it's that. like some Wim Hof stuff where he shuts down the cytokines from eating E. coli by uh, breathing and sitting, yeah, no. sitting, sitting in cold snow. Uh, listen, I love Wim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, she allowed her body to heal, right? Hmm. The grief, the pain, the anxiety was continuing to stress the body. And then no matter what outside interventions she was given, the body wouldn't heal. And just from, you know, doing the tapping and, and people say, Oh, so it was the tapping that cured the infection. No, what I think happened is the tapping allowed her body to relax about allowed her body to let go, allowed those healing mechanisms to turn on. And then it, right. Those put her in a de-stressed place where she actually could heal. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like what people say about cancer. I was listening to somebody talk about this earlier today about how the body is not going to heal itself of cancer if you're just constantly moving and asking the body uh, to, to, to be performing all the time, under stress yeah. all the time, traveling all the time. It, it was, um, what was it? Oh, it was my friend Brian Johnson. He does like I, he has like this thing called Philosopher's Notes, where he okay. he'll like, yep. he'll do certain yep. books and cover certain sure. books, and he covered this book called Anti Cancer. Um, and I think it was the author of the book eventually died. Um, he he uh, went to relapse for a long time and beat his cancer. He eventually died. And he said the reason was because like he he wrote this book or he started speaking and he just started making himself more available to the world and speaking yep. and and not giving his body a chance to just be unstressed and on its own. And he That's eventually that. relapsed, and that was how uh, he died of cancer um, because he didn't put himself into a state where his body could heal or where it could stay healed. To 
really no, interesting. It's huge. Really yeah. interesting. And, and, and it's a like go, it, go, go culture. Right. You know? It's it's like um so I got sick for the first time in seven years, uh four <laughs> four days ago. You can hear I'm still just a little bit congested. I got the flu. Like I was yep. down and out for two days in bed, yep. but it was right at the tail end of having like a film team come to my house and film a documentary and a whole bunch of workouts to begin to prepare for this year's race season. And your your body will force you to stop at some point. You can either do yep. it yourself or or your body can force you to do it. And so it's, and, and, um, you know, in, in my case, my body just put me into bed where I couldn't move. And it, it <laughs> yeah, a, there you go. It was there a, go. it was a, a good reminder of my own mortality and uh, a good way to keep me humble and a good way to help to remind me to slow down and to say no well, sometimes. Seven, se- and, uh, yeah, slow down. Seven years is a good run though. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> as, know? as my friend Paul check says, you know, you don't need to make yourself available to the world 24 seven, like as, yes. as cool as that is. And as much as it stokes the ego, there's, there's, there's drawbacks. Hey, I want to interrupt today's show to tell you about, is that annoying when I say, Hey, like that? Well, I'm not going to stop doing it because it seems pretty natural. It's called Daily Burn. Daily Burn. They're the world's leading provider of on-demand video workout programs. You just connect your device. You can do them anywhere, at home, uh, on the go, in your hotel room, in your basement, your friend's basement, naked in your backyard. You choose. You choose based on how much you want your neighbors to like you. So what they do is they produce these special workouts all in a personalized workout program you get to choose an expert to lead you through cardio or yoga or kickboxing or dance they stream a new live workout every single day so it's almost as though you're going to the gym in a big fitness class but you can do it from the comfort of your own living room they also have an online community you can join to kind of gamify the whole thing so you can share your fitness journey and connect with other people who are doing the same class as you it's pretty cool it's a very good way to keep yourself motivated to exercise or when you're just bored, you don't know what you're going to do for a workout. Just open it up, choose one of their classes. Boom. That's it. That easy. Done. Uh, you get a free 30 day trial with daily burn free. You go to dailyburn.com slash Ben. That's daily burn.com slash Ben. Something to go along quite well after you've done your day of daily burning is this wonderful golden elixir that I drink. It's called Organifi Gold. It's got smooth coconut milk, cinnamon, ginger, lemon balm, two different super mushrooms that give it this warm relaxation effect, including reishi, one of my favorite relaxation shrooms. They've managed to put all this together into this tiny little jar. One scoop of it makes amazing golden milk, just like you'd buy at the coffee shop without all the corn syrup and the hassle of driving to the coffee shop and the fact that they make it lukewarm and not toasty hot and they put cane sugar in it, blah, blah, blah. This stuff's just all organic. No mess. No juicing, no cleanup. Just I, what I do is I heat up a little coconut milk or a little water, and I put a couple of scoops into a NutriBullet. I like to do it like that because I like to get it all foamy, and then I just blend it. But you can also just stir it in, whatever you'd like. So it's called Organifi. You get twenty percent off this Organifi Gold. To do so, go to Organifi.com. That's Organifi with an I. Organifi.com, and use discount code Greenfield. Discount code Greenfield will save you 20% off. You're welcome. So check it out. Organifi with an I.com. Code Greenfield. All right, back to the show. So anyways, I want to get back to your football player and shoulder story, but yep. um, already I've got some some skeptic questions for you based on what we just did. Um, first of all, how much of this is me just doing the effort? Like, could I just stand there and do those affirmations that you said and not tap like has anybody ever looked into what if you just do the affirmations or uh and i'm gonna be a very advanced devil's advocate now what if you just do the tapping without the affirmations like like why do you do both yeah look i mean this is what i think um it is my belief there's been some uh research studies that have you know they call them dismantling studies right try to pull apart the mechanisms and um you know what's what in the tapping action. Um, you know, there are some mechanism papers that have shown specifically that, you know, the tapping is an active, uh, main ingredient that makes the difference. Now, if you stand there and do those affirmations, that's good for you too. Right. So I sort of think that all of it combines for the maximum effect. So if you say, great, we have the affirmations and let's call that 10% of the result or plus 10 points and what 
result you're going to get. Okay. And then you have the tapping and then, yeah, that by itself can have something. Then you have working with someone who's good. So if you've got a one-on-one relationship with a competent practitioner who knows what they're doing, they're going to do a better job. Um, if you, you know, so as you stack all these different elements on, people always say the placebo effect, is it the placebo effect? Yeah, of course it is. Everything has a placebo effect in it, right? Like everything, you know, modern medicine is fights at Except 33%. ribeye steaks. Ribeye steaks are not a placebo. They're <laughs> not a placebo. At all. Real. <laughs> at all. You cannot tell me I've eaten a ribeye steak and make me feel better, but I yeah. guarantee when I sink my teeth into a big juicy French cut, bone in, ribeye, there's no zero placebo. placebo. That's, that's it's the just, truth, It's just right? freaking 100% pure protein and ambrosia. <laughs> So everything. So, you know, we, we say the placebo effect as if it's a bad thing. No, it's a good thing. It's the power of the mind to heal. Um, so we might as well use that placebo effect. If you're going to do something, I mean, really, whatever you do, whether you do tapping or whether, you know, you listen to another podcast and say, hey, I'm going to try this. If you go into it with that positive expectation, it's going to work better. If you pick up a supplement and you're like and you just listen to 10 podcasts telling you how great that supplement is, its efficacy it's likely to improve because we've shown that we've shown that the body creates these healing chemicals. So, you know, my feeling is that it's all of it combined. That's where the magic really happens. And, uh, you know, but yeah, nobody's ever it. actually like just studied what happens when you tap these points or what happens when you just do an affirmation. Um, no, they, I mean, they have studied it. So let me, let me see if I can pull up, you know, a research study. Okay. Um, well, you're pulling you know, it up. I mean, I guess Louise Hay's book is all affirmations without absolutely. tapping, right? Like that's yep. an example of affirmations, I suppose. Um, I, maybe tapping like an example of, of tapping without affirmations would just be like acupressure or acupuncture. I mean, cause you're, you're putting pressure on certain meridians, right? Yeah, well, one hundred percent. And people, it's like, hey, if you want to do acupuncture <laughs> with it, like, great, you know. Yeah, there's been a couple, you know, dismantling studies. So one that I'm reading here now. I mean, there's over a hundred research studies on tapping. I never memorize them all. I'm too busy actually doing the tapping. Where are you finding? Um, them? Uh, so the best link for everyone to check out, let me put this in the show notes too. Is let me give you the exact link. It's let me make sure I get it right. So it's research dot eftuniverse.com. That's my friend Dawson Church. We funded a lot of the studies through our foundation, but he's the guy who actually gets them done. Okay. Um, and you can see on there, you know, anxiety, PTSD, like one after another, showing really consistent results. You, you funded which, the research, though. Uh, some of it, you know, yeah. the ones. I mean, you guys ever get so, called out for that? Like, because you wrote a book and did a documentary and stuff. No, honestly, and and if people say that, first off, I can only fund a couple of them because they're so expensive, you know? Yeah, I was going to say. Um, no, they're so expensive. I funded the ones um, with cortisol, like the saliva test, because I want to prove it and show it. Uh, we're doing some with DNA and RNA because I want to prove it and show it. And look, I think I think the, uh, oh, you funded it, so it has to be biased thing. Every single study is funded by somebody, you know? Yeah. Um, we certainly don't. You know, we, we publish everything that comes up, whether whatever happens and that's it, you know, and I, we need more of this research to show it. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to put a link to this research that you just mentioned in the show notes. If you go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash tapping, it's research.eftuniverse.com. Uh, um, another question, like what, what about this, this whole idea between acupressure and acupuncture? Have you done that before, Nick? Um, have I done acupuncture? Yeah. Like not or, to other people, but like, have you had it done to yourself? Yeah, no, I've, um, I've, you know, I think the difference, I love acupuncture. My acupuncturist moved down to Georgia and made me very sad because she was fantastic. I think the difference is, um, with the tapping, we're bringing in that emotional, you know, response, that emotional equation. And one of the things that I love about the tapping period, like there's a lot of psychologists, psychiatrists who bring it into their practice. Um, you know, from around the world, and they found that it makes a big difference. What I love is that, and what they often say to me is that they can give it to their patients to bring home, right? So mm. when you're, you know, um, there's a great story of, of my friend Scarlett Lewis who uh, lost her son Jesse in the Sandy Hook school shootings. Uh, Sandy Hook is 10 minutes from my house. I live in Newtown, Connecticut. It's the same town, so it, it really struck home where that happened, and that's when we actually formed the foundation to work with PTSD and trauma. And I had worked with Scarlett a couple of times. She learned the tapping. 
and found it very helpful. She woke up one day, uh, one night in the middle of the night, three in the morning in the midst of a panic attack. And she had had panic attacks before, so she knew the physiology of it. She knew that she was unlikely to be able to bring herself down from that attack without medication. So she thought, all right, I'll call 911. The ambulance will come here. My son, JT, her, her oldest son, uh, was sleeping in the room next door. Hopefully he doesn't see me leave. I mean, it's crazy talk, right? To take an ambulance in the middle of the night, leave your other son. But that's what she didn't know what else to do. She thought for that one moment, okay, let me try tapping. This worked for my anxiety before. And at three in the morning, she did 10 minutes of tapping by herself uh, in the midst of that panic attack. And when she was done, she was asleep. She went right to sleep. So wow. to me, that's one of the powerful things about it as opposed to, and, and again, I love acupuncture. It's not one is better than the other, but as opposed to those other mechani- other therapies where you have to go see someone, this is something where you're back in control, that you can wake up at three in the morning and have a tool to use in those situations. Okay. Yeah. That's what I like. So you can do it like on airplanes when you're driving in your car. <laughs> you know, the airplanes are the only place I've seen people do it publicly because I just don't think they care at that I point. I do everything publicly know? on airplanes. I do squats and lunges and <laughs> yeah, piss I off know the you flight do. attendants by touching my you, toes back when they're Dr. trying to. McCullough. Yeah. And Dr. McCullough doing, you know. And, you know, uh, it's funny. Dr. McCola, as you probably know, is a huge fan of tapping. I know. Um, he yeah, was actually. He's, he's a skeptic. He was in, he was instrumental in, in us getting the movie made. He's in the Tapping Solution documentary film. Uh, he was a big supporter from the beginning and us getting our message out there. And he was out there clamoring about EFT long before we were. Um, he found that in his clinical practice, he, he saw a huge difference and saw that so many things, really when people weren't getting better, if they followed his advice and didn't get better, it was likely because of an emotional issue, because of trauma, because of something they weren't letting go. So yeah. Yeah. he's a big fan. Okay, so um, one other question before we get back to your your story, um, how did you choose those points that you were tapping, like like why the top of the eyebrows and the side of the eyebrows and underneath and the chin and the collarbone and below the armpits and to the top of the head, like why those and why that sequence? Sure, no, that's a great question. So that's that's EFT. That's what Gary Craig. Of course, it's a great right? question. I'm a <laughs> professional podcaster. <laughs> professional podcaster. Did you get? Do you have a license in that, Ben? Are you mm-hmm. licensed to do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Man, you better I do. Be. I do. Otherwise, the podcasting just like licensing a, just like a plumber, go just like a plumber. I'm licensed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the EFT sequence. That's what Gary Craig developed from TFT. Those are the major endpoints of meridians of the body. There are other points. So, for example, um, the inside of the wrist. People will tap their two wrists together. That's another endpoint. Um, there's a point in the back of the hand that's really good for trauma. Uh, so it's the back of the hand in between the pinky and the ring finger, sort of that slit of that little bone here. The reason we do the same points all the time and keep it simple is that when you start incorporating a bunch of other points, people just get confused and then they don't do anything, right? So um, that's the basic sequence that when you have a panic attack at three in the morning, that's sort of your go-to. And then if you are doing other things and it doesn't seem to be working, you can research and incorporate some of those other points and strategies. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, in, in terms of the history of this, it's always been those points, in kind exactly. of like that style of tapping. Yep. Was it just discovered through self experimentation? You know, um, Roger Callahan did it through a lot of muscle testing, uh, self experimentation, and then you know working with those, looking at those meridians, ancient systems, and Chinese textbooks, and things like that to see where those main endpoints were. Mm-hmm. Um, but muscle testing was a big part of what he was doing to, uh, okay. to test that out. Muscle testing, I get, like describe that. So kinesiology, which, you know, I believe in it. I can never do it properly, so <laughs> I don't personally use it. Um, the most basic thing is the idea that, you know, the body stays strong. So if I say a certain statement like, my name is Nick, I put out my hand, you press down on my hand, that deltoid muscle stay strong because my name is Nick. And if I say my name is Ben, that subtle shift in the energy system, because it's not true, my hand goes weak. Uh, People who are trained and know how to do it can do it really well. I always feel like, (laughs) like people are making it up. Um, But, uh, but that's what uh, Dr. Callahan in part worked on to develop that. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of people are pretty skeptical at muscle testing stuff. Yeah. Have you done any of it? Uh, Like, like, been like kinesio tested. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't tested it myself, but I bet, I mean, yeah. I go to some of these fitness conferences where people like jump out of the woodworks with holding some bracelet or, you know, dangling yeah, yeah, some yeah. essential oil in front of you and they're like, hold this in your hand and hold that in your hand and see whether you test stronger. And 
It's yeah, all, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I actually kind of, this sounds mean, but I, I kind of enjoy effing with those people a little bit and, you know, I'll <laughs> pretend to be super weak in some cases then super strong in other cases uh, or, you know, not let them get the leverage advantage on me. And yeah, it's, uh, dude, I'd, I, I realize that there's something to the concept of certain things affecting your physiology to the extent where muscles can become st- weak or muscles can become strengthened. But, you know, for example, if someone were to give me like 20 grams of a really great fish oil and 20 grams of a really crappy fish oil and they were to have me go do a back squat workout or maybe even muscle test me, you know, eight oh. hours later. Okay. I'll give credence to the fact that that could be a decent N equals one evaluation of yep. what's going on with your muscles. But someone puts a post-it note that says vitamin C in my hand and then a post-it note <laughs> yeah. that says vitamin D in my hand and I'm weaker with the vitamin C or the vitamin D and they say, oh, you need more vitamin C or less vitamin D. Like that's where I, I do get a little bit skeptical. Um, yeah, no, I, so, I don't, dis- I don't so, yeah. disagree with you. And also if you're at a conference and someone has an agenda, right, then that's, that's yeah, a real issue. Because if you're trying to sell the bracelet now now there's you know the, the muscle the person doing the muscle testing really has to be unbiased they can't be selling their supplements and their c or d or whatever you know? yeah 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 okay so uh i want to get back to this this uh, guy with the shoulder so so you worked on him with the shoulder but at that point you you weren't that familiar with tapping no i just knew the basics which is what's so amazing about it right that someone you know what will happen from this podcast, I've seen it time and again, there will be people who experience pain relief in the five minutes that we did, and they'll just be like, wow, I can't believe it. There'll be people who experience relief and then go tell their uncle about it the next day and say, oh, let's watch this video together. The points are like this. And, um, you know, it doesn't take a high level of expertise to get some results. I saw a comment on our Facebook page about a week ago. Uh, we, you know, we're in the midst of our 10th annual Tapping World Summit. It's an online event. And it was, there was a comment where someone said, you know, I just learned about this. I'm, I think they were a physiotherapist or something like that. And, uh, said, I had a client who came in with fibromyalgia, been in pain for so long. We did this tapping video together and they walked out of there pain free. And they were just like, you know, 10 exclamation marks, just didn't even know what happened. Um, it's the kind of thing that you see with pain relief that it unlocks something. It allows the body to relax. It, um, you know, it addresses that turns off that fight or flight response, that muscular tension, you know, as you know, Ben, part of the problem with pain too, especially when it's chronic is that it's, it's not just the injury. It's so psychological, right? Mm -hmm. That there's the expectation of pain. There's the fear of pain. You know, it's like you see that football player, like that lineman who gets hurt again and again. And, uh, you know, yeah, you could, it's easy to say, oh, well, he's got a weakness here, a weakness there. But half the time I think is that they go in scared, you know, they're like, it's the first game back, and boom, they get hurt again because they have that fear. Um, I remember working a couple years ago with a lady by the name of Bobby on her knee pain, and this was at a live event uh, on pain relief. We tapped on her knee pain. We went back to a childhood event that was really traumatic for her. Her pain. What do you mean went you went down. back to a childhood event? Yeah, we we explored together a childhood event that, um, and we tapped on it. Right. So what that meant was she talked about her fifth birthday where her father came home probably drunk and said to her, I wish you'd never been born. So that's the kind of imprint that on a five-year-old is, you know, beyond shocking. I mean, it's a, it's a turn the world upside down. Can't imagine. I, you know what? I get guilt. I got guilty the other night. I was helping my kids, uh, make a, (laughs) they're making a paleo ketogenic bread for their podcast and I felt like I was riding them too hard by uh, <laughs> by by interjecting during the podcast too much. And I was sleeping that night. I was like I was like guilty as a fa- I couldn't oh, imagine God. telling my child <laughs> oh, I've never not. been born. Not. Jeez, it's 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 beyond awful. And she and she carried the burden and the weight of that. And um, you know, especially in that time period, zero to seven, when we just download everything and we need our parents for safety. So what we did is we we replayed that event and. You know, when we look at childhood traumas, if we think about something from our past and we still feel that tension or that anxiety or that anger, it means it's still uh, affecting us. So we went back, we tapped on it. She replayed the scenario. She created some new scenarios. So, you know, as a five-year-old, you're helpless. As an adult woman, she was able to take the cake and throw it in her dad's face, right, to have like some sort of fight back for um, that kind of situation and then release that anger from her body and try to find some understanding and some forgiveness so we went through this whole process, knee pain goes away, and this is you know the point for the psychological part of it, and the next day she says that when she got out of bed, 
she turned and she made a groaning noise, yeah. you know, just like, oh, and then she realized she didn't have any pain, that she was just making the noise that she always made when she got out of bed. Right. So, you know, that's just an example of these patterns that we establish in ourselves and our lives that can really, can really dictate us. You know, she's groaning just because that's what she knew how to do, even though the pain was gone. So you got so into this stuff after seeing your, your friend get healed that you just started writing books on it. So the first thing I did was uh, make that documentary film. Uh, it was 2007. I was in real estate. I was buying, fixing up, and selling houses. Uh, 2007 was a terrible time to be doing that, as you can imagine. Um, so right when I made the decision, you know, when I made the decision to go make the film, the business was actually going okay. I left that business uh, with my dad and brother. I still had, you know, responsibility for it, but I left it to make the movie, and then the real estate market crashed. So. Um, as I'm making the movie, you know, we're hundreds of thousands and then eventually almost a million dollars in debt with that real estate business. As I'm making this film that cost me 150 grand to make on credit cards and credit lines. Um, you know, we set out across the country with cameras and film people like Dr. Mercola, you know, in his office in Chicago, he was a big fan of tapping. You know, you mentioned right at the start of the podcast that there's so many people in this field who are huge fans. Uh, that was a big advantage to us because we knew that, you know, he was a huge fan that Jack Canfield from the Chicken Soup for the whole Soul series was a huge fan. Uh, Joe Vitale and Bob Proctor from The Secret um, were big fans. Cheryl Richardson um, used it. So all these people, experts, were using tapping in their lives. And what we did in the movie is we had them sort of frame the issue and talk about tapping and their experiences. And then we brought 10 people from around the country together for a four-day retreat to do tapping. We went to their house beforehand. So we filmed John, who had 30 years of chronic back pain, Vietnam veteran, um, you know, multiple surgeries, medications, everything. We go to his house in Minneapolis. You see him in massive pain, on meds, groaning. And then he uh, comes to the event. He wakes up the second morning pain-free for the first time in you know 25 years or whatever it was. And that's what the film does. It follows these 10 people with pain, with anxiety, with all these other challenges. And we showed, because that was the thing for me with tapping, right? And it's still the thing. Hey, just first off, try it if you're skeptical, because you'll see that it either works for you or it doesn't, and then you're done with it. Um, but you can see the results. They are just there. We've had a lot more research since then, but 10 years ago, we didn't have that much research. So in the movie, I wanted to say, hey, let's get these 10 people and see what happens. And uh, that's what the movie did, and it did well. And that's what I spent the last 10 years doing and talking about. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Now, uh, with, with the, uh, with the exercises and, and the style of tapping, yeah. forgive me if, if this is redundant, but, but this, this style, like what you said in your books and the documentary, this is the same style as was originally invented. So you didn't put any twists on it. You just basically learned it and figured out how to, how to teach it for specific situations. Yeah, for specific situations and certainly put on, um, you know, I guess my flavor on it, which every practitioner does. Some people focus on different things. Um, over the last decade, I've seen more and more of what works and what doesn't work for people, both in the style and the languaging, um, you know, how we approach the issues. You know, the, the last book that I wrote, uh, The Tapping Solution for Manifesting Your Greatest Self, was sort of shorter chunks. It's a 21-day process. It's little wins every day, little tapping every day to to build something bigger. Um, one of the things that I found, you know, the last couple of years, as opposed to right in the beginning, is that people are really busy, right? We know this. And that even if the tapping works, they forget to use it or they say, look, I can't sit down and do this for an hour with a, with a you know, practitioner because I don't have the money or I don't have the time or I don't have the commitment, but what can you give me in seven minutes, right? What's the experience that you can do? So, you know, what we've been doing a lot in the last couple of years is finding ways to fit it into people's lives, um, and finding ways too, you know, one of our, our, with the research that we're funding and the things with the Tapping Solution Foundation, one of our big initiatives is how do we get this um, accepted on an institutional basis? You know, it's been a self-help tool. It's been in this field. Uh, it's been used, you know, by Dr. Mercola and Jack Canfield. Now, how do we get it into a VA hospital so a veteran with PTSD gets access to this technique? Have you done that? And, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we just got approval like official approval by the VA uh, as for EFT tapping as an approved therapy, which is huge. People have been doing it for ages in with veterans because it's so effective. But what would usually happen, and there's, you know, I remember a story three or four years ago that was heartbreaking. Somebody doing the tapping at, I think it was at Fort Hood, 
uh, getting amazing results. And since it wasn't approved, once someone found out they were doing it, they had to stop. So now it's approved. Uh, now we can actually do it officially and out there. And yeah, we're continuing right. to do to do that work. Congratulations, dude. That's cool. Um, all right, so I wanna I wanna get into some brass tacks for people because I know I know some key pain points my audience has that might go beyond just uh, the the shoulder thing that we were yes. talking about, um, or the hamstring thing. You know, we, we actually, I was gonna ask you about like chronic injuries or nagging pains, but it sounds like the the key there is to do a, a style of tapping and a sequence like the one that you describe where you're gonna release tension and release stress, which a lot of times is what's actually causing an area to be in a state of spasm or in a guarded state. It's kind of similar to to the way that uh, John Sarno talks about back pain, right? And, yeah, and absolutely. Back pain, how a lot of it really is. It's not in your head because it actually really does exist, but it's manifested by more or less what's going on in your brain than, you know, let's say like a, an intense muscle tear or tissue hypoxygenation or something like that. 100%. 100%. And, and just on pain relief to that point, you know, the other places to look at where I find a lot of results for people is asking yourself questions like, what I said earlier with Kathy with the tooth pain, what was going on in my life when this happened? Um, oftentimes the injury itself, so if it's a car accident, for example, tapping on the trauma of the accident, the fear and the pain and all that stuff, mm. that can make a difference on it. So, right. you know, not looking at it, we, we tend to say like, okay, well, that was the accident, so that happened and that's it. And now, you know, especially when we go to doctor and we get a diagnosis, you know, like the amount of people who have said to me, oh, well, my doctor told me I have, you know, this disc that is degenerative or this inflammation or they get that diagnosis so then they go that means it's not in my head right so then this won't work for it and time and again if they you know give it a shot you know we show in the movie patricia who fractured her l1 vertebrae in a boating accident she had rods and screws in her back like the whole thing and her doctors told her she'd be in pain the rest of her life that's just the way it goes Again, she shows up at the event, second morning, she's pain-free, she goes on to do yoga. She even says, and this is pretty cool, Ben, she said that, you can see her saying in the movie, when she came in, she could feel the rods and screws in her back, like she felt it, she described it as a battery pack, hmm. and then after the tapping, she could no longer feel it. So something happened in her musculature and in, you know, in the tension in her back and potentially the trauma from the accident that was holding on tight, and when it let go, blood could flow in and the body could heal. Interesting. What about for sleep? That's, yeah, that's let, great. Let's I be just, even more specific. I wake up at 3 a.m. I can't <laughs> get back to sleep, and I can either go smoke a bunch of weed or take a Valium or yep. do tapping. And I want to do tapping. Yep. So fill yep. me in. It's great. Just, just two nights ago I did, on Sunday night, I did a Facebook Live on sleep. Um, and I did it in particular because um, I was reading about these kids in Parkland uh, with the Parkland shooting, how they're having trouble sleeping and nightmares. And we're sending a trauma team down there to, to help them out. So I want to do a Facebook live to frame that. And then we reached all these other people and someone even said, I wake up, I woke up at 3 AM. I wake up at 3 AM every night. So what did I do? And I did, a, it was like a 15 minute tapping. It wasn't much, you know, just the best place to start before bed, you tap, you think about your day, you just go through the points and you know, if your wife or husband's up for it, like, you know, my wife and I, not always, but, you know, once in a while we'll tap together for five minutes and we'll just talk about the things that are stressing us out, you know, like that download of the day and this, that, and the other. So just tapping through the points and do that. You'll often find that when you tap, even during the day, you'll yawn. People say, what does that mean? It means that your body's relaxing, right? That you know, often <laughs> most of us need more sleep than we're getting. So, Or you're just, not breathing deeply enough. Or you're not breathing deeply enough. No, you're absolutely right. So just tapping through the points, thinking about your day thinking about what's stressing you out. It's going to help you let that go and sleep more deeply. And if you have dealt with insomnia before, just like the pain, insomnia is the kind of thing where if you expect to wake up at three in the morning every night and you've done that for 10 years, your body's going to wake up at three in the morning and you're likely to be anxious about it or angry about it. So before bed, you can tap and say, you know, even though I'm sure I'm going to wake up and I'm so frustrated with this and I'm anxious, I choose to relax now. And then if you do happen to wake up at three in the morning, you just tap for a few minutes then on what you feel. You know, people are always looking for the magic word and the language. It's really, what do you feel? Are you angry that you're up at three in the morning? Are you pissed that that new supplement that you tried didn't work? Like, what is going on in your body? Tap and let it go. And I think you'll find it very effective. Okay, got it. So you just basically wake up and you do it. What would, what would be an example of an affirmation? Um, so, it, you know, Again, speaking the truth of it, 
So if it's three in the morning, even though it's three in the morning and I'm just so annoyed and I can't stop thinking about this, I choose to relax now. Um, and then you can tap through the points and just say, I choose to relax now. I choose to let this go. It's safe to go to sleep. Um, you know, sleep is a very vulnerable like situation for a man, right? <laughs> we're like man or woman for, for humankind. We're vulnerable. We're open to danger. So if we feel that we are in danger in some way, if we don't feel safe in our bodies, it can affect sleep in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, you wake up during the night, you can tap. I know you probably have a rule for everything. Like you want to make a smoothie, just tap. Uh, yeah, yeah. High cortisol or stress. I wanted to ask you about that, but obviously we kind of kind of address that and the amygdala. What would be something that has surprised you in terms of a use that someone has had for tapping? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, there's always like the the funny you know, which they're funny to us, but they're not funny to them, like the ridiculous phobias, you know, like the clown phobia. You know, I worked with a with a friend of mine uh, probably seven or eight years ago, and I was just terrified of clowns. And, you know, we can all laugh about it, but it was uncomfortable for her. And she, you know, uh, whether it showed up on TV or she walks in the store and there's a clown balloon, it just brought anxiety to her. So, yeah. you know, we did tapping on that, like any sort of weird phobias, yeah, and that's that's an encoding in the brain with hmm. you know the bodies um, that says this is dangerous, whatever it is, and people right. have some weird stuff that they say is dangerous, and we can turn off that encoding. Um, and then maybe not so surprising, but potentially what I'm you know maybe most excited about now is is tapping for kids. Um, we you know through our Tapping Solution Foundation, we're bringing this into schools. Do you mean we like shared a video kids tapping or tapping to enable you to be able to have children? Well, yeah, I mean, look, fertility stuff is, uh, that's a different one. No, tapping, okay. not tapping for kids. Gotta be kids, careful like, with your semantics, make, dude. Make, you, you are absolutely right, Ben. Um, you can do both, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly the stress around fertility is a huge issue. But definitely um, don't call it tapping kids. <laughs> tapping kids, yeah. But uh, So we put out this video about two months ago, just a two-minute video of our work in schools, and it's been viewed 43 million times um, as of this morning, shared almost a million times. So showing that there's a demand and a desire to, you know, give our cool, our kids a different experience at school, at traditional schools where they're stressed, they're anxious, they're overwhelmed, and the tapping can help calm their bodies. A lot of teachers are bringing it in just as a way to, you know, it's not like you're going to do an hour of psychotherapy with uh, with kids in that situation, but just to start the day. They come in with stress from home, um, you know, especially in, you know, difficult situations at home, just to let go of the day, prime the body and the mind for learning. Okay. Got it. Interesting. You know, you probably should create another title soon about tapping for scary clown phobias. <laughs> you think that's the next big, I can imagine, book, I can imagine you know? the cover, <laughs> you know, like the red wig and like the wicked smile, you know, the leering clown peeking out from underneath the cover. You could hey, even combine pretty... that with the kids like tapping for scary clown phobias, dot, 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 and kids. And kids. Yeah, Bob. there you go. I just made you a million bucks, baby. I'm you, you, go, you and your I'm friends at uh, Hay House. Yeah, you they're and your friends at Hay House. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be pumped. There you go. There you go. If you get a book deal before I do, then I hate you. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, just real quick on that sleeping, I, I just pulled up that Facebook yeah. Live. There's a ton of comments, but this is what I love. So this lady, Carolyn, she says, I have horrible insomnia. I've tried everything. Going to try this now. Have heard of it and sort of tried it, but trying it now. And then she comes and comments the next day. She says, Nick Ordner, I don't know whether it was your tapping or not, but I slept better last night than I have in quite a while. <laughs> so I'm, oh. I'm going to try it again tonight. Um, oh. You know, someone just yeah. having a quick experience. Uh, it's go. powerful. I like it. It's not a double blind clinical study, but I don't necessarily need those to know that something works. Well, and, we have we have both, thankfully. Yeah. But yeah, look, I mean, there's so many user cases, and and I, you know, when I first got into it a decade ago, I would have said like, oh, for, look, forget the studies. You you just try it. What do you need to study for? But since then, I've really learned more about, especially when it comes to institutions. Understandably, you know, the VA can't allow everybody and anybody to do any therapy they think of or any like right. crazy thing they think of. So there have, there has to be some standards. Um, and I'm willing to jump through the hoops to get the research done to, you know, pass those standards so we can help people. Research.eftuniverse.com is where those studies are for those of you who want to go check them out. And then as a reminder, you just get the books, but it's eyebrow, the side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, chin, collarbone, under the arm, top of the head, 
And uh, I recommend you get Nick's book, Tapping Solution, but then also the one, Tapping Solution for Pain Relief, I think is really good. And actually, while you're over on Amazon, um, support Amazon. They need the money. So also get Heal Your <laughs> yeah. Heal Your Body by Luis Hay. That's a really good one, too. Yeah, um, and we've got a bunch of stuff. If people just yeah. want to see the tapping points and you know some basic videos, just thetappingsolution.com. Like, tapping. there's, there's plenty of things. We also have a lot of science and research there where I took – some of those research studies that, you know, can be hard to make sense of and wrote some blog posts about them. That way we can make sense of them for those that aren't as, you know, scientifically inclined. Yeah. Cool. I dig it, man. I dig it. Uh, and for those of you listening in, um, I've hung out with Nick and he's, he's, he's a cool, honest dude. And, uh, I, I know he's not a, he's not a physician he's not like a white lab coat wearing fella who's hunched, How do you know over, I'm not wearing a lab coat hunched right over now? a tiny mouse uh, <laughs> tapping on the mouse. Uh, you might be wearing a lab coat. Uh, you might be wearing pasties in a sailor outfit or a scary clown mask for all I know because this is an audio podcast. Uh, however, either way, Nick's a good dude, and uh, his books are, are actually really good, very practical, easy to understand. I've given them to family members. I've given them to friends. Uh, his books for kids, my kids have read. They actually have uh, two of them on their bookshelf, and they read them. They understand them. They like them. They've used them as well. Uh, so you know, they, they were tapping when they were seven years old based on the books that Nick sent over. So um, so it's good stuff, and uh, it's stuff that I've, I've tried, and I recommend you uh, you add it to your, to your toolbox box of cool things that you can do to your body to enhance your health. Uh, so that being said, Nick, thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, it is a pleasure. Um, you know, I'm a fan and I listen to many, many of your podcasts and thanks for the good work awesome. you're doing in the world. Well, thanks, man. I'm honored. BenGreenfieldFitness.com slash tapping is where the show notes are. Links to everything we talk about. In the meantime, I'm Ben Greenfield along with Nick Ortner signing out from BenGreenfieldFitness.com. Have an amazing week. You've been listening to the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Go to bengreenfieldfitness.com for even more cutting-edge fitness and performance advice.